the terpene is the brings the medical properties to the cannabis to uh, in cannabis to the receptors that we find in our body. Yes, um, it, it's kind of like what I well, what I say is kind of like the secret sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, without terpenes, then you have just straight THC or CBD or both. Um, and you could find that in the pharmacopoeia as marinol and epidiolex and stuff like that. And, sure. and that, I believe that's the reason why they're not as successful as isolates. Not only are they synthetic isolates, um, but they're lacking the other cannabinoids and more importantly, the flavonoids and the terpenes. Um, and uh, another uh, metaphor I like to use is imagine you go to an Italian restaurant, um, you go with a loved one or whomever, and you both order spaghetti and meatballs. That chef is going to serve you both spaghetti from the same exact pot. And that would be your CBD, if you will. And then they're going to serve you meatballs from the same exact pot, your THC. Now, if you look at it just like that, they're going to look the same, smell the same, taste the same, service the same uh, reasons as far as nourishing you and keeping you alive. But if one of you adds red sauce and the other adds white sauce, now they look different, smell different, and taste different. And one person may not like the other, which is why you chose two different terpene sauces. Um, so in, in light of that, as you see on the screen here, our Relief 1 to 9 disposable pen comes in different routes of administration. You have oral, sublingual, um, topical, and no edibles on that one. Um, but this one I chose specifically because it's a 1 to 9 ratio that has a specific amount of myrcene, limonene, alpha-pinene, caryophylline, and alpha-humulene in a specific order. Um, and the reason that is so important is because this specific product is going to be great for pain relief and to help you relax, if not go to sleep. So, and then we'll go to another product later to show you the comparison of that one tonight. But to that point, terpenes do drive the bus and it makes it so much different for a total entourage or synergistic effect. Yeah, I think it's important to point out here. I want you to notice the uh, ratio is one to nine. R the number one, the first number is the amount of CBD in the product. The second is the amount of THC in the product. So it's a one to nine. It's 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 heavily leaning towards uh, THC, which points to being potentially uh, something that can help with pain relief. Uh, I think it's important that to point out this. We're showing a vape pen here, but it doesn't make any difference if you get the tincture or the or the gels. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. The difference would be the dosage and and the way you actually administer it to yourself. And that's one of the beauties of our wellness line, our ratio based products. They're consistent across the board. Yeah, and it's one of the things about cannabis. It really doesn't make a difference the route of administration or how you take it. They're all there. It's just a matter of, like as you mentioned, in each of the different products, you have a different uh, dosing process. Uh, for example, when you're in the inhalation product versus an edible product, but you still get the terpenes and you get the medical benefits from both. Correct. And and, and also to that point, when you're using other products such as, or other methods of consumption, such as oral, sublingual, or edibles, you want to be a little cautious because terpenes are also the most volatile um, molecule in there. And as soon as those terpenes hit the stomach acid, they're kind of destroyed. Um, so most, some people will say it's too sedative or regardless if a product says sativa, which is meant to be uplifting, they still get a sedative effect. Um, so right. that's why we, we, met, we try to tell what sublingual is usually the best unless you're using our theragels, which bypass the stomach acid and, di um, and break down into the digestive tract and you get more absor absorption there. Right. Now, here you're showing something really important. This is the certificate of analysis for that relief uh, vape pen. This is key to be able to read and to understand what's in the product. Why don't you take me through this? Absolutely. And they've actually broke it down a little bit more so it could be easier to read. And it's also dependent on the product you're getting. So some of the COAs or certificates of analysis may look slightly different, but they're all going to contain the same information um, and sometimes they may not contain it. Like sometimes we won't test for terpenes. On this specific cert certificate of analysis, you can see all the cannabinoids there on the left from Delta 9 THC all the way down to CBG. And then on the right, you can see the list of terpenes and how they're measured. Towards the bottom there, you see the total terpenes of 4.73%, which is actually quite excellent. Um, I think more that the more people are getting involved in understanding terpenes, they're wanting to see higher percentage in terpenes. However, usually when you see higher than about five or 6%, that usually means that product is still usually fresh or it was tested a little bit earlier. Um, however, there is a protocol for that that the state doesn't allow that here in Florida. Um, so this is very important and this can be provided upon request. We, I do believe we're trying to implement some of these 
terpene profiles into our website so you can at least see the top three. Um, but you're always going to see them within a percent or two sometimes and more regularly less than a percent individually, totaling that 4.73%. Sure. And these COAs are very important because this is what uh, allows you to understand the quality of the product that you're buying. That now these tests are done. You you as a dispensary here in the state of Florida are required to do two internal tests, and then the third test is to hand it to a third party outside your organization to verify those two tests. Is that correct? Correct. And I do believe it's actually the state that mandates whoever that third party is going to be. Um, right. But don't quote me on that part. Right. Now here's an interesting product. This is called Dream. It's again a one to nine product, uh, as opposed to the other product that was ideal for pain relief. This really helps you relax and get some sleep. Absolutely. This is meant to kind of shut down the mind, help kind of dole out all that craziness that one may be experiencing. And the difference is the terpene profile specifically. This one has a significant more amount of myrcene in it. And then beta caryophylline is towards the, the bottom of the list rather than towards the top of the list. So it won't be as beneficial for pain, but it will assist with pain. So that's the difference. Again, different names, same ratios, relief one to nine, dream one to nine. The difference is the sauces, the terpene profiles that are going to dictate how that's going to really affect your body. And that's why that's why a lot of people say, well, I'm looking for the, um, the cannabinoid. What strain is there? Really what you should be looking for is what we call the cultivar. The cultivar is the strains working with the terpenes. And it really, they're designed for a particular purpose. In this particular case, one was for pain and the other one was for sleep. Uh, it's kind of really important. Now, one of the favorite uh, vape pens that are there is Zen. Uh, this is great for pain relief, especially if you, um, especially in the afternoons or early evenings. A hundred percent. And this is a great sativa product for those who usually steer clear of sativa products, again, meant to be uplifting because they're afraid of that anxiety inducing effect that they tend to get from sativa category products. The mm -hmm. difference with our Zen one to four here, as you can see the TAC ratio, the number four is lower than nine on our other products, which are meant to be heavier, meant to be sedative. You can't really have that much THC in a really good sativa product, depending on the profile, because the more THC content, the more sedative effect you may, you may experience. Mm -hmm. The other difference on this terpene profile the reason it doesn't necessarily induce anxiety, it actually helps with it, is because it, you're not pairing up limonene and alpha-pinene next to each other. Those two particular terpenes, although they singularly are great for anxiety and stress, combined can actually induce anxiety or stress. So mm -hmm. if you're in the market for a sativa product, ask the dispensary, come to Sutera, ask for the COA, or just ask us, and we'll let you know which ones have the limonene and not as much alpha-pinene. That's really, really important. So these are kind of these are kind of a, kind of a quick pass. Uh, really putting these all together, I think uh, this is important because what you're looking at is the terpene differences in the products, especially relief and dream, um, complement the cannabinoids to provide a particular effect. Why don't you take us through this? This is a bit of a busy slide, but it kind of shows a comparison of the products. And really how much how much of the different terpenes and candidly the cannabinoids that are in them yeah so you can see side by side how the different products come relief is one of our favorite products that most people come for because it kind of tackles both symptoms pain and relaxation or sleep um, however we do get a lot of people coming in for dream as well the dream and the zen do come in topicals as far as patches but not the lozenges or the liquid drops mm -hmm. but if we go down i'm going to go straight to the terpenes if you don't mind mark over to the sure. right side of the screen there and as you can see Total terpenes at four to five percent is pretty darn good. Usually, there I, I see it in flour somewhere between three and four, maybe five percent. Um, but look lower down, and you'll see between relief and dream the difference in percentage on that beta myrcene. And then these are not in the exact order either. If you look below on the chart, the circular chart, you can see it a little bit better. Myrcene and relief is significantly lower than the myrcene on dream, although the percentage is less than 1%. That's how potent terpenes are. Um, they're low percentages, but they they pack a punch. Um, and, yeah. when you, and that's an important point. It's not a matter of the percentage. These are very, very potent and very powerful uh, medication to help you get the relief you're looking for. Absolutely. And so looking at those charts, you can actually see the comparison of the different terpenes, why Zen is completely different compared to Relief or Dream. And then the differences between Relief and Dream and seeing that 
typically is enlightening because then you can actually understand why this product is working or not working and go for up another, a similar product or steer clear from uh, products that don't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is very, very interesting. I, I, I like these comparisons because I know a lot of people who I deal with are saying, well, what, what strain should I use for this? What strain should I use for that? And what really it breaks down to is pay attention to the terpenes. Once you understand the terpene profile, it helps. Then you can get the product, the quote unquote uh, uh, cultivar that you need to be able to address your particular situation. We had some questions that came up. What terpenes would you recommend for and different conditions? This is going to be our little test here, Manny. Why don't we run down a few of these? And we'll start with what do we recommend for pain? So pain, my favorite go-to is going to be caryophylline. It's your natural analgesic. Um, I would look for that as number one primary. And then if you want to relax a little bit with that pain relief, it would be myrcene and linalool. Um, if you want it more for the daytime, caryophylline followed by limonene and or pinene. Um, you'll find it primarily in hybrids. I, if you're dealing with pain, hybrids are usually the best way to go to start off with because you'll usually find relief pretty quickly that way. Right. Important. Um, and I think one of the things I want to point out about this chart now, for everyone who's watching, this is kind of a busy chart. It may be hard to read on your cell phone or uh, on a tablet. We are going to send you after this video a email that gives you a link to the, the actual video itself, as well as all of the, uh, the presentation. And this chart will be in there, so you'll be able to take a look at it. But I think it's important to point out that each of these have some different effects. And so when you're looking at pain, here you can actually see it's pain relieving, for example, here with pine, pining. You can see they've actually tested and looked for a lot of the effects that these particular uh, terpenes have uh, on your particular condition. Now let's, let's take a look at arthritis, because really what you do with arthritis is you want to relieve the inflammation as well as the pain. Absolutely. And then with that product, I would look for caryophylline again, but as well, you would look for it in more of a higher CBD product, particularly. Um, unless you're in severe pain and you need something to help you sleep, you would find a high THC. And I also want to point out, it's, it's not necessarily going to be just one terpene. You're not going to find a one terpene product. It's going to be a combination. And you're trying to figure out that special combination lock for yourself in order to feel better. So as you just to point out real quick, if you look at limonene and pinene, they both say relieve stress and anxiety. However, combined, as I mentioned before, they can induce that. So arthritis, to, to that point, carry off and again, because you're dealing with pain, inflammation. I would use myrcene and definitely a topical um, and then a one-to-one, -one, like our soothe one-to-one -one, um, for as a vape, as a tincture, as a, a lozogen, or yeah, as a lozogen or as a theragel, because that way you get that anti-inflammatory effect internally, which can take a while if you take an edible, but then you also have that topical that's going to help re help relieve it and you won't get too euphoric from it. You can still function during the day and it can help you relax more naturally where you could go to sleep naturally and not have to take more medicine. As you pointed out, CBD, uh, higher CBD ratio products are great for inflammation. Products with higher THC level, in other words, ratio is really good for pain, but it's key. You really need to have both of them together, kick off the entourage effect, and in essence, to boost both of them. It's kind of interesting that when they're together, um, they're much stronger than by themselves. And that's, a, that's a important. That's the key to cannabis. Cannabis isn't a one-trick pony. Cannabis can help with a lot of different conditions. It's not complicated, but it does have a number of different um, positive effects on addressing the conditions that you have. And that's what makes it complicated is which of these terpenes do I look for because of my particular situation that's out there. Uh, the good news is they're all there. Let's talk a little bit about anxiety because anxiety is something that a lot of people have, anxiety and stress. Um, this is one of the main reasons people use cannabis. Yeah, um, potentially, or more specifically, that general um, anxiety when you're out and about. And I'm actually going to tie this one a little bit with PTS or PTSD as labeled there, because anxiety is actually a qualifying condition that's similar or like it falls under the branch of PTSD, which is a qualifying condition. Um, mm -hmm. And so when you're dealing with anxiety or PTS, basically what you want to look for, depending again on the time of day, if you're looking for a daytime product that's high THC, I would definitely turn towards our Zen. But if you're new to this, I would steer away from the high TAC products and start off with small doses of a one-to-one -one like our Soothe, which is kind of uh, more indica for the category reasoning leaning. However, a small dose won't put you in the couch. It'll kind of actually uplift you a little bit and make you feel better because your anxiety is going to kind of melt away. Right. Um, the the when, terpenes, I'm sorry. When you look at when you look at anxiety, you can see down here very specifically a lot of these terpenes address it head on. 
Yep. Talk about Absolutely. stress release right here, for example. Yep. And and then the, the the terpenes that you would look for in that particular product or products would be myrcene, caryophylline, and linalool. Well, let's talk a little bit about how do I get my appetite back? Pretty much any cannabis product from what we get feedback on can kind of increase appetite um, unless you're taking a very sedative or have very um, strong indica, high THC indica product. Um, it could kind of knock you out. Um, but to increase appetite, you want to find something that's going to increase your activity. So you're looking for hybrid sativas which are going to be caryophylline, limonene, eucalyptol, and possibly terpenoline, and not necessarily in that combination, but they all kind of play a part in that area. Sure. And looking at the opposite of that, how do I suppress my appetite? Well, if you take a look at humulene down there, it helps quite a bit with that. Yep, that's pretty much one of the only ones that's really known um, as far as feedback, um, let alone studies, that really helps suppress appetite without having to increase temperature above 400 degrees. Um, mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that if you go above 400 degrees, um, if you're dabbing, typically the only reason necessary to do that would to be able to unlock the cannabinoid THCV, um, which is also known to help suppress appetite, but it's also very sedative and also very um, relaxing. Sure, it's there. Um, when it says helps to increase energy, this gets more into the sativa leading product. Yes, and we actually have a product that's very, very good with energy. However, you want to be mindful of that anxiety inducing uh, part of it. But those who are usually looking for that uh, increase in energy typically don't deal with that anxiety. Um, and one of my favorite products to use during the daytime would be limonene, and, or excuse me, as far as the terpene profile with limonene and pinene would be our one-to-one -one revived product. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it comes in a vape, it comes in a, a, a oral, sublingual, and that is kind of like a cannabis energy shot almost. You will definitely feel the energy, but you won't have the euphoric effect. So if it gets too overwhelming, you can kind of mitigate that because you don't get the, the necessary anxiety with it because of the CBD part that's in there. It's a 50% CBD, 50% THC. Right. So let's talk a little bit about focus. Um, people talk about cannabis really helping with focus. I know a lot of musicians, a lot of artists, a lot of uh, people that are in theater and do the mm -hmm. arts use cannabis for that particular reason. Yep, and uh, I have a favorite product from Sotero on that one too. It's actually a high CBD product. It, it, it carries with eucalyptol and pinene and some limonene, um, and that's called the Four to One Serene. Um, very good for anxiety, stress, focus, clarity, and also inflammation. Um, and so it's a great all-in-all -all kind of vitamin that I like to call it for myself. Every morning I take at least one of those their gels, and it contains uh, again limonene, pinene, eucalyptol and possibly terpenoline, depending on the profile. Mm -hmm. Great. And this gets also leaning towards uh, relaxation. I know like, relaxation and anxiety don't necessarily go hand in hand, but a lot of people do just want to just chill out, just at the end of the day, just be able to um, reset. Yeah, especially if you don't want to just take something and then all of a sudden it knocks you out. Um, a great product for that is our one-to-one -one Soothe. Um, that is phenomenal for relaxation, stress relief. Most of our clients or, or, or patients or customers um, consider Sue to be kind of like a couple of glasses of wine or right. for if you're uh, a whiskey or alcohol drinker, a shot or something to that effect where you just get just right, but you're not over that edge. So you can actually digress. It's great for spasticity. You can just really relax. Um, and right. that hopefully could lead into that next one where now that you're feeling pretty nice and relaxed, you could go to sleep naturally. Um, the one-to-one -one contains linalool, uh, caryophyllene, a little bit of myrcene, um, and a few other things that are on, not on there, but those are the, the lower of the barrel type terpenes that are not necessarily as important for you to know right now. Yeah, I think the key for both of those, when you talk about relaxation and sleep, is really the, the linalool and the myrcene can help quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And that's for sleep and insomnia as well, especially myrcene. One of the great benefits of myrcene though, is, as well is that it, it helps permeate the blood-brain barrier. So THC can carry through uh, more abundantly, more rapidly, which helps the euphoric effect as well with THC coming in, but it also helps relax the body faster. It, okay. it helps with that spasticity and it lasts a little bit longer that way as well. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and Crohn's disease, which is something that bothers just a lot of people, Cannabis has been very help, very helpful in that particular area to help relieve that particular condition. Absolutely. Uh, our one-to-one -one dream. Caryophyllene is probably the best one when it comes to Crohn's disease, IBS, um, and a few other areas, but particularly because 
uh, karyophylline or karyophylline has also been known to react with our CB1 and CB2 and our other receptors, almost like cannabinoids, kind of mm -hmm. causing us to reclassify a little bit. So that is amazing for Crohn's, IBS, um, mm -hmm. possibly some glaucoma too. Right. Yeah. And like I say, IBS is another one that gets addressed quite a bit. And again, you're looking for that, uh, especially uh, having mercine in the product. I think mercine is almost prevalent in almost every uh, cannabis product that's available. Just about. Absolutely. It's a matter if it's towards the bottom of the list or at the very top of the list that makes such an impactful difference. Sure. But for, for IBS, what, what's your recommendation there? Myrcene, karyop karyopylene. Um, I wouldn't, I'd actually kind of steer clear of pinene and limonene until you kind of get a good basis, simply because it can overenact um, for IBS anyway. Um, and it's not really going to help with the inflammation as much. So I would stick to myrcene, linalool, and karyophylline for Crohn's, IBS, and glaucoma. Great. Uh, yeah, and you mentioned uh, you mentioned the right the terpene profile for glaucoma. This is really important because there's a lot of studies that have come out. You know, a lot of doctors want these um, double blind tests and all this kind of good stuff, which makes which cannabis really doesn't lend itself very well for. But there's been a lot of studies done in Israel, in in uh, in uh, the UK. And also in Canada, that shows that cannabis is very effective for glaucoma. Absolutely, and and if if anybody gets confused, I know it's, it's a dump truck of information we're dropping here. Um, but if anybody gets too confused, all you really have to do is pick out one that's on our chart here, and stick to that one because it has what symptom you're looking to alleviate. And the, we come to the dispensary. We'll have a one-on-one -on -one consultation. There's not really any time limits. We'll sit down, and take our time to explain, and we'll show you which ones have that particular product. And that'll allow us to understand you better or learn more about you, so we can guide you better as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the consults are really important, and you you offer these where you can sit down with someone at that dispensary and get and get your questions answered, and basically some recommendations on what you should be using to hopefully uh, get some relief that you're looking for. 100%. You don't have to make an appointment. You walk in as needed, and uh, we have a private consult room where we can sit down in the open wherever you're more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, let's, look at, uh, let's look at one that I get asked quite a bit, high blood pressure. It's interesting in cannabis because what happens is cannabis is distributed throughout your body. The endocannabinoid system uses your bloodstream to be able to distribute the endocannabinoids throughout your body. When it does that, it activates your your heart, it activates your, 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 let's just say your blood pressure to be able to be, make sure that those endocannabinoids are sent out to that part of the body. Now that does and will raise your blood pressure slightly. Uh, in certain people, again, cannabis is very um, personalized. Some people it can raise it more than just slightly, uh, but it does increase the amount of blood pressure. But what's interesting is when you get into a lot of the relaxing a lot of the ones we talked about for relaxation or to address anxiety, when you get into that more of a, what I would call a uh, indica style product, what happens is once your, your body activates, it sends that, that cannabinoids through your body. The can, once those, once those, um, uh, those cannabinoids and those terpenes take effect, your body then relaxes and your blood pressure tends to go down. And what's fascinating is that it's something where don't confuse the fact that you've got to, because you're using your bloodstream as a delivery mechanism, it gets activated to do that. But once it delivers the package, it then goes into your body and it causes your body to relax more and it actually brings your blood pressure down. I've actually measured myself on this and I find it very fascinating. So what I would look for, again, is all the ones that relax you, the linalols, the myrcenes, things like that. They can help you quite a bit with blood pressure. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, the only thing I was getting confused on is usually when we deal with high blood pressure uh, customers who are looking for that specific um, effect or uh, product to help with that effect, um, we go with a, a higher CBD product because CBD acts as a dilator. Um, yes. So that's why I, was, I don't know which way I want to lean on that. But um, yeah, I completely agree. So that the, our Soothe once one would be great because it's high CBD, has myrcene, linalool, karyophyllene, and Kind of be set for that and just try on a small doses go low and go slow yeah no i think i think you're you're right on you want to pay a, you want a higher cbd type product to address blood pressure and also if you look take a look at eucalyptol eucalyptol has yeah. had does have a, a capability to be able to address that particular condition um but again if you have a lot of thc in your body it will activate your your it'll cause your your heart your 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 body to really try to push a lot of that out or when you're using the CBD products, once they're delivered, they tend to cause your body to relax and come back, come back down and 
Normally what happens is when ta people take CBD or any cannabis product, you get a slight increase in blood pressure and then it goes back down. Um, there are cases where it does go up quite a bit. And in that particular case, talk to your medical marijuana professional, talk to your medical doctor about that. But it will subside because it's part of the, it's part of the way cannabis works in the body. Um, it does do quite a bit to help you, again, relax, lower your anxiety, lower your stress. And when that happens, your blood pressure goes down. By the way, thank you very much for pointing out the CBD part. I think that's really important. Let's talk about migraines because a lot of people suffer from migraines. And it was interesting. I've just read two studies over the last two months about how uh, one was done in England and one was done in Canada about how they've shown how cannabis can help quite a bit. They found that migraines come from a lack of endocannabinoids, what they call an endocannabinoid deficiency in your body. Your body's not producing enough endocannabinoids to prevent the migraines. They found that when you use cannabis, by your body introducing those cannabinoids into your body, what they're able, or phytocannabinoids, what they're able to do is they're able to not only address the, the migraine, but also to potentially prevent it in the future or have less migraine attacks in the future. Have you seen this? Have you seen that? I've heard of that um, along the same lines as well. Um, I've actually, so I'll go a little step further. For instance, my son suffers from uh, epilepsy. Um, and if you've ever had any loved one or anybody who suffers from epilepsy, after they come out of that, they are hurting a little bit. Their muscles are really tight. Their head is throbbing. Um, it's not a great feeling. And my son is a medical marijuana card holder in Florida. And post the seizure, because of his migraine, after the studies I've done, linalool, um, humulene, and eucalyptol, if you can find it in, in a, a product that's high CBD, in a one-to-one -one product, at a higher temperature around 400 degrees is supposedly going to help with that. Um, I unfortunately had my son suffer from a, a seizure and I tried the product after the fact and lo and behold, he snapped too like it was magic. His headache went away, his muscles relaxed, he wanted to go back out and go playing. And I was like, oh, we got to rest a little bit, my friend. Um, but to that point, Mark, like you said, yes, it does help significantly the cannabinoids, um, especially if you have the right terpenes that can carry those cannabinoids into the body, like myrcene and caryophyllene, um, eucalyptol, and terpenoline here and there. Sure. There you go. Well, Manny, you did a good job. You passed the test on uh, on um, <laughs> conditions and terpenes. I think this is uh, kind of interesting. Let's look at some questions that were um, submitted prior to uh, this particular webinar. Yeah, It says, um, since terpenes have varying boiling points, how do you know the temperature of your nail that you use, that you're taking a dab? So there's a couple of ways. There's a couple of devices that have an infrared uh, kind of laser that sits underneath your nail or to the side of the nail so you can see as it heats up, or you can take one of those thermal readers that you can order on Amazon and you can test it that way. However, what you want to remind, remind yourself of is if you're dabbing, you're likely going to be above that 400 degrees, so possibly looking for THCV. But as soon as you drop that oil on the dab or as soon as you inhale on, on your pipe or whatever your nail's in, that temperature is going to drop significantly automatically. So maintaining that temperature is what's important. And it's very hard to do using the nail without that set um, temperature reader beneath it or to the side of it. But they do sell devices that can help you with that. Yeah, I think, I think it, it's hard. It's, it's a very, very difficult task to be able to control the temperature on a dab and also when you smoke a joint. When you put that 500 degree flame up to your joint to, to, light, a, to, to light a blunt, um, what you're doing is you're burning off almost all of the terpenes, uh, a lot of the flavonoids and a lot of the cannabinoids. I guess my recommendation here is um, don't dab. I would recommend going to a dryer vaporizer uh, using something like that where you can actually set the actual temperature of that particular device that brings out the, the best in that particular terpene. Uh, I just think you're you're fighting a very difficult battle with dabbing and also with trying to smoke a joint to be able to get the most out of the terpene. Your thoughts, and, Manny? Yeah, if you're also not um, implementing a CBD regimen throughout the day when you're not dabbing, if you have time for that, you're also in danger of plateauing, where your right. tolerance is going to be so high, nothing is going to work anymore. And to come back down, if you can, because there have been studies showing that sometimes people cannot get off that plateau once they've reached it, um, we don't want you getting there. So if you're really interested in the terpenes, I would keep it below 400 degrees, uh, which really wouldn't qualify for a dab in that instance. 
but uh, or use a dryer or vaporizer like Mark suggested. Uh, here's a good question for you. What strain or strains have the highest percentage of humulene? That's a great question. Um, I don't particularly like to recommend which ones do or don't simply because it's a live product. It's ever changing. And there are no necessarily or there aren't any real um, labeling laws on what any person or entity can call a product. Um, so if I told you Purple Punch from Certera has the best, highest percentage of humulene, we ran out of stock and you go to another dispensary asking for Purple Punch and they have it, their Purple Punch may be something completely different, just like my spaghetti and meatballs at one restaurant is not the same at another restaurant. Um, sure. So anytime you can look on some websites or once you go in, you can ask um, the guides, see what they have in stock and most of them will be happy to start diving in because they want to know too because it's ever changing. Right. I think a lot of the products that are higher in CBD have uh, higher in humulene, higher in humulene, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's something to pay attention to. Pay attention. Can you, so when you're looking at a ratio, pay attention to where your ratio, the first number is higher than the second number. There's a good chance it'll, there's a good chance it'll have humulene in it. Mm -hmm. One good question here, it's just kind of interesting. How do you extract terpenes? Are the terpenes that I see in liquid form synthetic um, related? Is a terpene a terpene or does its source matter? Can't you want to take that one? Or you want me to take it, Manny? I could dive into it a little bit, um, and then I'll let you hit your graphic here. But um, a, a terpene is a terpene in essence. Um, however, the source does matter because you want quality terpenes. Um, and from my experience, just to speak very lightly on this, cannabis-derived terpenes or CDTs compared to botanical-derived terpenes or BDTs are going to have a difference in the flavor profile. It turns out that botanical derived terpenes are typically going to be more fruity or flavorful or even more aromatic to that fruity flavor, whereas cannabis derived terpenes are always going to have that hint of cannabis, that marijuana, as some people will call skunk scent to it. Um, and it, to that point, um, you, we, we extract uh, terpenes in many different ways. One way is using ethanol alcohol. And if you extract um, terpenes using ethanol alcohol and then you evaporate it out to recycle that ethanol alcohol anytime you spray that ethanol alcohol again it's going to smell like marijuana so now you have an ethanol essence of marijuana so um, there's different ways to do it source doesn't matter because of quality um, but other than that that's my expertise on, on as far as sourcing well I'm going to make uh, three comments about terpenes first of all I want to make it clear very difficult but the point is, it's very hard to extract terpenes at home. Uh, this is a process that requires, let's just say, some chemistry and some testing to be able to really do it right and to get the quality of product that's out there. Leave this to a professional organization. I don't know of a simple way to extract the terpene. Your thoughts, Manny? I, thank you for saying that. I, I didn't want to hint to anybody to try to use ethanol alcohol to try to extract terpenes from no. plants. Um, the process is very tedious. You use a lot of volatile chemicals, um, safe, volatile, but safe, um, that you will see in your COAs that are no longer present in the products that you're, sure. you're, you're consuming. Um, so, yes, I agree. There is, an art to, there is an art to extracting terpenes. I probably, I only know, I know of five uh, organizations that I would say are quality organizations that produce terpenes I would buy and use. I only know three of them that I really recommend uh, because of the quality control that they do. Um, it, it's just a, it's a tough area um, because they are so volatile. Um, I think most of the dispensaries like Cetera have done a great job of being able to figure out how to extract those and actually be able to uh, bring out the best of the terpenes in each of the different products. Now, when you ask, are, are, uh, are the terpenes that I see in liquid form synthetic? Um, I don't think you really have as much synthetic uh, terpenes as much as you have bio-derived terpenes. Um, your thoughts on that, Manny? I'd agree. I'd agree. Um, you don't, it, they're too volatile to create synthetically and be able to manage and keep in a liquid form, I would imagine, from what I've seen in, in processing. But uh, yeah, it's, it's bioavailability and where they're sourcing it from. You don't want terpenes from a rotten apple or a rotten orange or, you know, a, a, right. a genetically enhanced product. So you want to be cautious of things like that. Yeah. But I think that the, the answer to your question is, yeah, if you see it in liquid form, it probably is going to be uh, a bio-derived bio terpene, although they are cannabis-derived uh, terpenes that are in, are in a uh, more of an isolate form. But again, um, this, is, this is an art. I mean, if there ever is an art to making cannabis products, this is where it comes into play, is how do you extract and how do you take advantage of the terpenes that are out there? This is the magic of, of producing 
for manufacturing. This is what distinguishes the good quality cannabis from the bad quality cannabis. Your thoughts on that, Manny? A hundred percent. We will take our, when you're looking at concentrates anyway, the best quality flour to do that, um, our premium flour, because we want to have the best sourcing available. Right. Um, one question is, I tried to shop for terpene, for, shop my terpene profile. Why do I get different effects? Is cannabis adaptogenic? That's a good question. That's a good, that's a good word. I, I haven't seen that word before. Um, your thoughts, your thoughts, Jenny, because I think it goes back to what you mentioned. Um, you have a product that is a natural plant product. Uh, just like roses, they may look the same, but they're not going to be exactly the same when they're all growing in this, but from the same genome in the same area. Your thoughts, your thoughts, Manny? I agree. Um, it's a live product. It's going to vary from batch to batch. And as you can see in terpene percentages, they're so minute, but pack such a punch that a slight difference can throw off that effect. But it shouldn't be that off if you're sticking to the same strain and you're looking at the COAs and they're comparable. Um, so that's why you'll get those different effects. The slightest change of percentage, even THC, if the THC or CBD or some of the cannabinoids vary, like CBG changes in there, um, it, it's it's a forever changing thing. So then the next follow-up question would usually be, well, it's a medicine. How do I find consistent availability that's going to keep treating me the same? Um, to that question, our wellness night at Sotera is the most beneficial that I've seen because it's always consistent. However, even though it's consistent, your body is very adaptable. It's very resilient. It's going to get used to things. And typically, most patients will have to teeter between one, two, or maybe three different products to keep the body guessing. So right. what I would do, what I would suggest is find three products at least um, that are similar in profiles and just keep on teetering till you find the one that really dials it in and see how long that lasts. And then always use CBD somewhere throughout the day or night if you can. That'll help mitigate um, your tolerance and that effect you get from the THC. Sure. Now, I think one other thing comes into play here. It's not just a matter of the actual product that you're using. In many cases, it's the environment that you're using it in. You know, is it early in the morning? Is it late in the evening? More importantly, have you eaten something with it or not? Because if you eat, use cannabis on an empty stomach, you'll get a different uh, effect than if you eat it with foods. Yep. And then you'll also possibly get that second wave. Um, mm -hmm. So if you go to bed on an empty stomach, you took your medicine, you might get some effect or you will get some effect and it may be beneficial. Then in the morning you, you consume something and all of a sudden you get the second wave. You're like, wait a second, I just took my medicine nine hours ago. What's going on? That's because right. cannabis is that fatty molecule and it needs something fatty to attach to to get absorbed into the stream. Right. So also, you know, it's not just the actual product itself. Sometimes it's the environment. Is it in the afternoon? Is it in the evenings? Have I eaten? Have I not eaten? You know that type of thing that comes into play, and also the the um, if you're gonna you take you can use that terpene in a uh, vape pen versus in, in a um, tincture, you may get a different effect as well because it's just a different route of administration. Yeah, you're also converting that delta nine into eleven hydroxy, which has a, a significant stronger bond to our receptors, um, so it'll last longer as well. Yeah, you should you, getting a different effect is not something I would worry too much about. You're still gonna hopefully get the effect fact the question is uh, that particular batch um what's the ratio of that terpene and i really think that comes into play and also does it have something have you eaten something that it can attach to to help it go forward let's take a look at the next question in vape products how much of a terpene do you need to be beneficial related is it more important to take a look at milligrams of terpenes or percentage of terpenes um i would lean towards the milligrams of terpenes your thoughts manny so I'll, I'll get the first one first. How much of a terpene do you need for it to be beneficial? It's not just one terpene. I want to make sure that we're clear on that. It's usually a combination or it will be a combination of terpenes. And typically, each individual terpene would be less than 2%, sometimes, and more than likely, less than 1%. Um, mm -hmm. So you're looking at the totality, the synergistic effect of what you're going to get from that. And if you look at the COA, the milligrams of terpenes is actually translated into percent of terpenes as well. So they're one in the same. You can look at the milligrams go across and it'll convert it to percentage. And then if you go down, you'll see the total percentage or milligrams of terpenes present. Um, yeah. So those are one and the same. And I would keep it anything around 3% is great. Um, the further up, maybe to 6 7% is phenomenal. 
Um, but don't be upset if it's less than 3%. Average across the board used to be around one to 2%. We're dialing it in, we're getting it better across the board. So it's slowly creeping, but right now, four to 7% would be phenomenal. Yeah, and I would say if you get two or 3%, uh, you're doing great. Don't don't shy away from those products. Remember, terpenes uh, are very powerful, very, they have a lot of, they're very potent. So uh, a little goes a long way. Think of um, it this way, if you would, Mark, if you ever diffuse things, you usually have water and you put a couple of drops of whatever you're trying to diffuse to make your house smell good. One or two drops of whatever you're putting in there smells up your whole house beautifully. <laughs> that's that's how potent terpenes are. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, let's look at the next question. Please explain the difference between the benefits of terpenes and CBD and how I can get absorb it. Excuse me. How I can absorb it daily for Crohn's. So that's that's a really good question. Crohn's is always a tough one, especially for absorption. Um, but um, our Soothe one-to-one has shown promise in that. So you're getting 50% CBD, 50% THC. So you get a good feeling effect, and it's also going to help with the inflammation. It's also going to help with any digestive issues or any of the gut issues as well. And the terpenes that come with that are going to be myrcene. b caryophyllene is number one, my favorite. Um, myrcene, and I believe linalool, and then it has a little bit of the limonene and uh, pinene, so it doesn't completely knock you out. Mm -hmm. But, and let me make sure I get the question right, the difference between the benefits of terpenes, they're one and the same. Um, it's just a matter of getting absorbed absorption. And this is where I would say, please come into any local Sutera and have a consultation with us so we can get a better understanding of what the symptoms of your Crohn's are because it can vary from person to person, kind of like fibromyalgia. So you, you, you would have to have that discussion to get more in depth. I hope that yeah. helps. Yeah, but it, it does help with Crohn's, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. What's the best way to consume without side effects like lung cancer or whatever, like tobacco, uh, nicotine products? I, th I think what we're talking about here is um, if you're going to, I'm trying to read through this particular question because I'm trying to understand what they want to say. Um, I think they're really asking for um, if I'm vaping cannabis, is it as bad as smoking cannabis? And your thoughts on that, Manny? I believe it's not. There are studies showing it's not. Number one reason, there is no combustion. Um, you're not getting these carcinogen and tars and resins from combustion. What's being left over as far as resin is recond recondensation of the vape. Um, so that's why if you're vaping, you feel that heaviness or that phlegmy type feeling sometimes. Number one, you might be vaping a little bit too hard or puffing a little bit too long. But if you're not, then it could be that it's just recondensing a little bit. And the benefit of this is that the body can reabsorb these oils. They're not going to harm you that way. There's also no heavy metals, no toxins. You can even use a dry herb vaporizer to vape flour as well, where it brings it up to a temperature where it's evaporating the trichomes and the terpenes are being released from these trichomes, and now you're just inhaling that vape from the flower without all the carcinogens, tars, and otherwise. Sure. I think it's important to point out that when, you, when you're vaping, what you're doing is there's nothing burning. So you're not getting burnt material in your lungs. Now, let's, let's, let's understand something. Anytime you put anything into your lungs, you have to be careful because that's a very important part of your body. You don't want to hurt them. When you're putting burnt material into the lungs, it's been shown uh, on a number of studies, both with cannabis and without cannabis, that's not a good thing. Obviously, cigarettes contribute a lot to that. When you're vaping, you don't have that burnt material, so it doesn't cause that carcinogenic effect that you get when you're smoking without, when you're smoking and putting burnt materials into your lungs. So I think that's the first step that's really, really important. The second is that in many cases, when you're vaping, it's not as harsh. It's a fine mist as opposed to uh, the, the smoke that you get from cigarettes that can help quite a bit. Remember, a lot of people who have lung problems use bronchial inhalers, and those bronchial inhalers go into your, into your, into your, um, into your lungs, and it helps your lungs quite a bit. There are bronchial inhalers that contain cannabis that are very, very effective for what you're doing. So, but I think it's important to point out cannabis products, especially vape products, do not have the negative side effects of smoking, but you are putting something into your lungs and you have to be careful about and pay attention to that. Your thoughts, Manny? 
I completely agree. If you don't have to, or if you don't want to, as it shows versus other routes, you have sublingual, oral, topical. If you want the more immediate effect, a losogen or a sublingual route would be beneficial because your onset would be within about 15 to 30 minutes, maybe 45. Um, whereas, as you may know, inhaling is going to affect you within minutes, if not sooner. So there's other routes and I highly recommend them. But if you're looking for that immediate breakthrough effect, vaping is not necessarily a bad idea. Um, right. Yeah. And, and it's OK. I mean, a lot of people perceive that you use cannabis, you have to you have to smoke it. You don't have to smoke it. I know a lot of people who've never smoked cannabis and use medical cannabis very effectively. Some linguals were great. Uh, oral, oral products like gummies and, and, and brownies and things are great. And topicals don't, don't, don't underestimate the quality that a good topical can have, especially in pain relief. Mm -hmm. I agree. Right there. So the next question says, are there negative health effects from not using medical marijuana with terpenes? Well, um, I think if you don't have the terpenes, you're not going to get the medical effect. Your, your thoughts, make, your thoughts, Manny. I, I tried, I'd be hard pressed to find a cannabis product without terpenes. Your thoughts, well, Manny? There's the synthetic one, uh, Marinol. Yeah, um, Marinol. Or go. Epidiolex yeah. for CBD. Um, and, and the problem, again, as I mentioned before, I don't know if it was this presentation or another, um, there's nothing driving that bus. So it does help with nausea. It will do this, but you don't know if it's going to, exacerbate whatever can or whatever mindset you may be in at that time it could create anxiety it could create depression it can knock you out it could lift you up it, it, that's the negative effect of using medical marijuana without terpenes which there is none if you put the medical marijuana quotations with terpenes but marijuana yeah. without terpenes is basically uh, a pharmaceutical is what I'm it's calling. synthetic i i am absolutely against using synthetics for anything I know that Miranol has been very effective. It's been used by, but it's, you have to use it under a doctor's care and he has to monitor you very carefully. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that Miranol hasn't been effective, but there, it, it's, it's a something that you have to be very, very, very careful of. And again, requires a doctor's care. I don't mm -hmm. recommend using synthetics. If at all possible, use a natural product because it's not gonna have all the negative side effects that you see out there. Miranol being pure THC, um, can really cause a lot of has a lot of negative side effects that you want to don't want to get into. If you add just a little bit of CBD to that whole regime, um, it takes away all those negative side effects. So again, um, this also is a question I think of: Do I recommend synthetics? And the answer: I don't recommend synthetics. Uh, which terpenes fight against cancer? That's a good question. Do different terpenes require different? Do different cancers require different terpenes related to what are the best terpenes to kill melanoma, cancer, and illness? Great question. This this has a couple of different directions. You want to start on this one, Manny? You want me to take it? Sure, I, I could I could start. <laughs> um, so the, as far as the terpenes, um, humulene is a great terpene. Terpenoline. Um, a lot of the terpenes are going to have neuroprotective properties, anti-cancer. Um, it's the combination of these that are going to be more beneficial. Do different cancers require different terpenes? I think for me, I'm a little too early in that study. And as far as the best terpenes to kill melanoma cancer and illness, um, I would refer you to our full spectrum oil, or also known as Rick Simpson oil on the other markets. Um, that's a I think you call that FSO, full, full spectrum oil. Full spectrum, right? yeah. Um, and that's basically the plant in, in the tube. You're getting everything that comes with that plant, all the benefits. However, it's not meant to be inhaled. You would ingest it, or you can even mix into a lotion and apply it topically which may be beneficial. So you don't necessarily have to even get high. Um, we have, or, or euphoric, we have high CBD, or right now we have indica, sativa, and hybrid. Um, there is some CBD in, in the works as far as a one-to-one -one possibly, if we could get that flower going, but you can use it topically and orally, and that's full spectrum oil. A little right. bit goes a long way about this, a little drop about the size of a grain of rice, or give or take. Right. So let, let me try to answer this from the standpoint of a um, how does cannabis affect cancer? What they have found out that cancer cells in the body require five to 100 times more energy than a normal cell. When cannabis enters the body, and by the way, where was the study done? The study was done by Dr. Christina Sanchez, who, by the way, 26 years ago, the country of Spain built her a lab in Spain to study cannabis and cancer. She's a graduate from Dr. Raphael Mershulam's program in Israel, studied there, 
one of the one of the bright stars there in, in Spain, set up studying cancer, and she's put out over twelve hundred different studies on cancer and cannabis. So this comes with some facts behind it. This isn't just something off the cuff. What she found out was that when cannabis entered your body, what it does is it basically the 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 the, uh, the neuroprotectant capability coats all your cells. But what it does is it stops the cancer cell from getting more energy than your normal cells. The best way of putting it is it starves the cancer cells. There's actually videos online, both on YouTube and she's published, that actually shows how this works, where the cancer cell will starve because it's not getting the energy it needs. Because what cannabis has done is it's regulated the system and provided the same amount of energy, in essence, to every one of the cells in your body. That's, that's basically how it worked. Melanoma was where Rick Simpson, who almost 30 years ago, maybe 28 years ago, um, discovered, uh, had melanoma and was not getting any relief from any doctor he was talking to, developed a cancer uh, a, a product that called Rick Simpson oil. Uh, it's very thick. It's very, um, let's just say, it's, it's, it's almost sticky. But what he found out was that when he took it and he actually put it on, it, on his skin, um, it actually got rid of the melanoma. And how did it do that? By starving out the cancer cells. And what they found out was that later on, was by ingesting it, meaning putting it on a cracker, putting it on a piece of chocolate and ingesting it, it was excellent for being able to address cancer in the body and also various other illnesses that are out there because Rick Simpson oil is a full spectrum, pro excuse me, is a whole plant product. Whole plant product means it has all the cannabis in it, all the, all the cannabinoids and all of the terpenes and all the flavonoids are in that particular product. Well, you said it best and thank you for complimenting. I, I completely agree. Yeah, but... It, it, it's a process of just starving the cancer cells. Um, and that's why when you have cancer patients, it's important that they not only take the, the medical cannabis, uh, uh, that, that, but they continue with it ongoing. My mother was diagnosed uh, six years ago with, um, with, with, um, with cancer, and she is now she is cancer-free. This was six years ago. Uh, again, with a doctor who told her that she had to have a surgery immediately and her, she had a very limited life cycle. I don't want to give anybody the impression that this is the miracle drug against cancers. We will do a, a webinar in a couple of weeks on can cancer and uh, cannabis. There's over 100 different cancers that they know about, um, and they all have different characteristics. So some works more effectively than others. Question is, how do I store cannabis with a higher terpene percentage? I think you always want to store cannabis in a, in a, um, uh, a darker container and also in a cooler spot. Is that correct, Manny? Yes, you don't necessarily want to put it in a cold area, especially if you're not going to or if you're going to be kind of picking at it because in a cold area, when you open it, it creates condensation, humidity, and that creates jar rot. Um, okay. What I need everybody to remember is that terpenes are constantly evaporating. You cannot stop terpenes from evaporating from the trichomes. The best you can do is airtight. I love mason jars. You don't need to really spend that much money. Mason jars... You don't need to vacuum seal them. You can order um, humidipax or cigar humidipax as they're known um, at mm -hmm. 60 to 63%. Throw that in the jar. That'll hope to preserve it longer. However, I wouldn't, for me personally, I don't like storing flour for more than about maybe 45 days. And that's pushing it because that's when it starts converting over to CBN. Mm -hmm. When your plant starts getting darker, a little goldish, brownish, it's converting to CBN, so whether it was a sativa, indica, whatever category you had, it's going to be now more sedative and relaxing. That's its degradation. And then after that, that's when it starts really going bad. But your test is put your nose to it. Even if it's skunky, if your body's attracted to it, you can tell the difference. Um, if you push away from it, you'll know jar rot when you, when you smell it. Botrytis is not fun to smell. So um, use your snozz, your olfactory system, and usually it'll lead the way. Right. Good question. The next question is a good one. Does higher terpene content mean it's a stronger flower? I love that question. That is a great question. Um, sometimes. So I've actually did a side-by-side -side comparison between two flowers. One was 13%. The other one was 22%. Um, the 13% had a higher overall content of terpenes by 2%. But more importantly, it was very heavy in myrcene which as I mentioned, allows more TAC to pass through the blood brain barrier, allowing a more euphoric effect and more rapidly. So it turns out that 13% flower that I tried actually knocked out the park of the 22% flower. It didn't even come in comparison, all because of that terpene percentage. 
Mm -hmm. However, that terpene percentage could have been higher and it could have been a different terpene other than myrcene, and it may not have been as strong. It might have been comparable. So it's all a chemistry, chemistry set. We're all going to be different. But my rule is the better the terpene percentage, the more I'm willing to sacrifice on my THC percentage, if that makes right. sense. I'd pay more attention to terpenes than I would pay attention to the terpenes than the THC percentage. Mm -hmm. That's just a great way to go. Uh, next question is great. I have a leg pain and neuropathy, also sleep deprivation. What product should, would be best for me? Remember, you have some products specifically for that. Absolutely. So one of the main products I would start off with would be a patch. Um, you put it right on top of the foot of the leg that's having the most pain or the neuropathy. And then I would ask the question, is it possible that because of the leg pain and neuropathy that you're having sleep deprivation? Um, so if you knock out one, the pain and neuropathy with the patch, then that helps with sleep deprivation. However, if not, but the if the, the patch one-to-one -one soothe works for you, then we can also apply it with the tincture internally or with the vape. Um, and that may help you sleep. The next step up from Soothe 1 to 1 would be the Relief 1 to 9, which we demonstrated earlier in the presentation tonight. That's great for pain and sleep. <clears throat> also comes in a patch. Yeah. I think if you want, to, you want to address sleep, I think that's what your dream product is all about. Yes, but not with the leg pain and neuropathy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the problem is you have sleep on one side and you have pain and neuropathy on the other. So you've got to figure out which, which of the uh, monsters you want to Get rid of first, which I think is going to be pain and neuropathy. Um, I agree with your your analysis. Some a lot of times when you have pain and you have neuropathy, it causes anxiety, it causes stress, a lot of different factors that keep you from sleeping. If you saw our sleep webinar that we did a couple of weeks ago, um, so I think that rather than trying to attack sleep, I would attack the pain, uh, the leg pain, and the neuropathy. And I think what you're going to find is it'll help you get more sleep. That that that's just my 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 gut feel yeah. of what's yeah. out there. Um, one of, here's a really good question. Here's an example of focus. I switched from Indica to Sativa. I'm a guitarist, and I find that my crea the creativity I get is amazing. Are there terpenes that can also help? I think what you're finding is when you switch to that Sativa, you address the set of terpenes that can help you quite a bit with your creativity. Your thoughts, Manny? 100% agree. Um, and welcome to the lighter side, my friend. Um, I'm a Sativa person myself. And what I find is that it's not, it's a different euphoric effect and it's more in the head, more cerebral, which is why I say if you're using sativa products, you're getting high. Whereas if you're using indica products, it's more in the body and more relaxing. So you're getting stoned. Um, that's just my little play on words there. But as far as your question, as far as terpenes, um, limonene and pinene, if you're really enjoying the sivas, those two combined may open up a, a whole new world for you. Um, right. And then terpenoline would be really good as well. Now, let's, the, the next question is a great one. How can I get started with, with baking with flour? I'm going to answer that question, but I'm going to give you one right now overriding answer. And the answer is Sherry Cannabis, uh, sherrycannabis.com. Go to her website. She has probably put together, not probably, she has put together, in my opinion, the best um, explanation of how to cook with cannabis, both for novices all the way through people that are um, accomplished chefs. She is, by the way, an accomplished chef. She has uh, degrees in, in in cooking. Get a hold of Sherry. Watch a couple of her videos. It'll help quite a bit. I think the real issue with baking with flour is, do you want it to have the THC and CBD active or not? Um, if you want the THC and CBD active, you have to uh, deboxylate it. Why don't you explain what that is, uh, Manny? Sure. So decarboxylation is when you're actually activating or you're, you're knocking off the oxygen off of the molecule of THC, which is making it from THCA, that acidic form, into delta-9 THC. Um, and so you want to be very, very, very careful with temperatures when you're dealing with that. I, I I'm, Thank you for the, the recommendation on Sherry's cannabis there, because I definitely want to check that out. But my experience, just generic cookies and little things, I'm by no means a chef. Um, I went out and bought a device. There's a few out there where you can actually decarboxylize, infuse, and do everything right there, and now you have your butter or your oil or your ingredient that you want to mix with cooking. Um, there's also test sets, so you can test the the, the potency of your product, um, but it gets very, very, very expensive, so you want to make sure you buy the right things the first time, so you don't have to go back and repurchase. Um, yeah. But I love uh, cannabis sherry. I, I'm definitely going to check that out, because that is very intriguing. 
No, she, she, I, I know her personally. Um, great lady, really knows her stuff and has a, a huge library uh, that's out there. Some of it you pay for, some of it you don't. Um, her free stuff is probably the best that I've seen in the market that's really out there. And she knows what she's doing. Now, when you want to, if you, if you understand when cannabis first begins, it begins at CBG, then it morphs into some acids, CBGA, CBDA, and CBCA. Um, and then with heat and also with time, it then becomes CBD, THC, and CBC. Now, here's what's interesting. Um, if you're going to bake with it and you want to have the THC and CBD in there, meaning help with inflammation and help with pain, you can deboxylize it. There's another formula that's out there that I follow. And in my particular case, I don't deboxylate it. I have a machine called the Magic Butter Machine. Um, I put the, the cannabis in, I, I put cannabis in the Magic Butter Machine with some MCT oil. I cook it for eight to 10 hours um, at 160 degrees. What it does is it causes the CBGA, C, THCA and CBDA to get activated, but it doesn't turn it into CBD or THC. It produces a tincture oil that I actually put in the bottles. And in the morning, I use that because it addresses my inflammation. It addresses my pain. Um, it addresses the overall help I need with my body, but I don't get high because during the day, I need to work and I want to be able to get the relief from cannabis, but I don't want the high to come from it. So there's actually benefits in cooking without deboxylating that's out there. And a lot of people won't talk a lot about that, but I think that I think that's something to pay, to pay attention to. Your thoughts, Manny? I, I'd agree. There's so many therapeutic um, benefits from THCA that most people are, are not aware of and that we're still coming to light. So I agree. Yeah. yeah decarboxylation is, is, is good. Um, but again, it depends on what you want. I, I, like I say, I have a magic butter machine. I found it to be very effective and it's helped uh, myself. And uh, it, it's, it's, um, I re highly recommend it, let's put it that way. Now, these things are pricey. I don't want to give you the impression that they're not. This thing was about, it was about 150 bucks. So, um, Maybe even more now, but because I bought it a couple of years ago. Next question: I need a strong uh, sedative indica without myrcene, appetite stimulant. Is there anything like that at Zotero? Manny, this is your right in your your wagon. That's that's a great question. I'm I'm, I'm spinning my wheels here because uh, there are indicas without myrcene, but to have it is it's not typical. Myrcene is kind of what makes an indica an indica category product. Um, but you can find that if you use smaller doses of indica without myrcene, because it's a smaller dose of THC as a cannabinoid, you might receive an appetite stimulation from that. The more right. THC you take, the more relaxing you're going to be, the less appetite stimulation is going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. So I would try, I can't think off the top of my head, I am sorry, uh, indica without myrcene, but I would just try an indica with uh, with, even with myrcene, but if you can find one without it at a small dose and see how that affects you first. Yeah, as long as myrcene is probably not the dominant terpene in the product, it'll probably help quite a bit. Mm -hmm. it's there. Uh, next question is, is medical marijuana going to stop pain, anxiety, and PTS from trauma? Man, man, Manny, you have some experience with this. I really do. Um, it's helped me with my pain, my anxiety, and my PTSD from my multiple traumas throughout life. Um, however, again, you want to be specific. You want to avoid like our, our one-to-one -one revive might actually really induce and give you a horrible experience because of the terpene profiles of limonene and pinene, whereas soothe one-to-one, -one, which will be a great start for the spot to start, um, if not a higher CBD is great for pain, anxiety, and PTS from trauma or otherwise. If you're brand new, you can use our Calm 12.5 to 1 CBD to THC. Um, which is not going to give you any euphoric effect. And it's just as it suggests, it's very calming and easygoing. Or our serene, which is more a little bit uplifting, not energetic, which can induce anxiety, but uplifting, which is going to be good for that pain, or excuse me, for that any depression, but more so because of the high caryophylline, it's going to be great for inflammation as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think medical marijuana is very effective. Again, this is where you have the consultation and making sure you have the right terpene profile can help quite a bit um, from trauma or even from not trauma. It, it, if you have that particular condition, medical cannabis can help there. Uh, mm -hmm. Next next question is a, is a question I get quite a bit. Do any of the medical marijuana treatments affect the A1C levels? And which method is the most effective in treating neuropathy? 
caused by diabetes. A side note is the A1C uh, test measures the percentage of red blood cells that have sugar-coated hemoglobin. Uh, the result is the average of your blood sugar levels over the past three months. A1C levels uh, are affected by cannabis. Remember, any, it's, cannabis works with the blood. Anything that is related to the blood, cannabis can affect. Now, I don't necessarily recommend cannabis as your answer to um, diabetes. There are a number of different medical products that are out there that all your doctors have to be able to address that. However, most of the um, medications like metformin are really only designed to be used for a week or two, three weeks at the most. And a lot of doctors hand out metformin like it's candy and, and leave it on there, leave you on it for a year or two, which really causes a lot of problems to your liver. Now, which products help quite a bit? The products with humulene in them will help A1C. The products that have eucalyptol will help with A1C. And your products, interestingly enough, with beta-caryophylline will help with A1C. It'll help bring those levels down. That is the cannabis products that can help. However, you have to couple that also with your, with your, with your, um, your diet. Remember, with cannabis, you really want to be able to eat something. But really stay away from you know, the fruits, the sugary, the sugary products. Your doctor will tell you, stay away from the, the certain products that you have, because that's also going to help you as well. So, you know, don't um, try these cannabis products and then go out and grab a bowl of fruit, is what I'm trying to point out. Help yourself and, and pay attention to what you're putting into your body um, and, and, and cut down on the amount of sugar. But also when you're doing that, let cannabis help you be able to really cut down on the, the negative side effects of, of diabetes. So again, I would pay attention to the products with those three terpenes in them, and hopefully that will be able to address what's out there. I, um, I have um, brought down my particular A1C level almost in half by using medical cannabis. But I also have to tell you, I also have a very strict regime of um, eating. I have a very strict regime of working out um, that um, is, is something that I follow as well. Not all people want to work out and, and also follow very strict eating habits, but if I really wanted to get rid of that, that's what you really pay attention to. Next question is, what is the most effective form or route of cannabis for pain relief? I think this really depends on what people really feel comfortable using. I know some people don't like inhalation products. Some people do. Some people are okay with uh, sublingual products, and some people don't. I think for pain relief, you're really trying to take advantage of the, of the THC and also with the, um, the, the, the terpene profile. Uh, Manny, your thoughts, because I think each of them has, each of the different routes of administration has a plus and a minus to it. I mean, for example, I'll take topicals and transdermal patches. They're phenomenal for pain. They're very localized. You put them on that particular area, and they, they work almost immediately, and they'll work for between one to three hours. That's the good news. Bad news is they work for one to three hours. You're going to have to look at something after that point in time to be able to help you. Your thoughts on this, Manny? Yeah, I, I'd agree with you, Mark. Um, it, it depends a lot on if it's it joint pain, is it arthritis, is it fibromyalgia, is it neuropathy, is it headaches, migraines? Um, it, there's so many that goes into this. All products can help with pain in some form. But if you're looking for something that's going to last longer, then you're going to use a sublingual or edible. If you need something in the heat of the moment for breakthrough, an inhalant would be beneficial. And you can use them in tandem. So that's the trick. You, you, it's not a prescription that you follow that's given to you directly. It's a recommendation that's given to you by your physician with the guidance of consultation from the physician, their nurses, and the dispensaries. And that's why the consultations are so important, even after the fact, even for follow-up. So we can see how it's working. If it didn't work, let's have a conversation. We can help you with that. Certera has a no-hassle return policy. You purchase a product and it doesn't help you for a medicinal reason, if it's malfunctioning, or say, for instance, a battery died prematurely, if there's something wrong with the product, then bring it back. We'll have that discussion with you. We'll give you a credit. We can't necessarily take it back because it's a medicine. Um, there are um, one one-offs here and there, depending on the circumstances. And that way we can get you a product that works. And when it comes to pain, nobody wants to deal with that. Start low, go slow. Um, patches work great if you really want to try some at a, a cost-effective price point. I think they're $15. You get to use it for a day, see how it works. It won't be too strong. And it can almost, almost, not quite, but almost guarantee you'll find relief somewhere in using cannabis. Right. 
I think I think a lot of it has to do with what you're comfortable using. If you're comfortable using it, you'll use it. I know that um, uh, I know that for my wife, for example, is big into sublingual drops. She's not much into the vaping side, but it helps her quite a bit with the sublingual drops. And also, uh, candidly, she has some edibles that can help her quite a bit as well. So find something that you will use and you're comfortable with, but also pay attention to the fact that almost every one of these will address pain. Again, make sure the terpene profile of the product you're buying addresses pain. That's the real key to that whole thing. And if, and if you're new to this, um, typically most dispensaries will always recommend an inhalant, a disposable vape or something for you to try because it's fast in, and you feel the effect immediately almost, and it only lasts a certain amount of time, maybe up to an hour and a half, if that long. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like the effect, you notice you're clear of that product and that terpene profile. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not comfortable with putting things in your lung or inhal inhalants, you just don't trust anything for whatever reason that's your prerogative, I would then recommend the sublingual drops because those will probably be the second fastest um, onset time, 15 to 30 minutes, give or take, depending on your diet, and it'll last a significant amount of time. But you can start off very low. You can actually dose it at a quarter of a dropper to half a dropper and so forth and so on. Sure. Great. Next question is a very good one. Does medical, does, does medical marijuana help inflammation if so, what are the recommendations? Does it help with uh, eczema? Um, Manny, your thoughts? I know it definitely helps with inflammation, especially CBD. Yes, and I've also um, seen it help with uh, eczema as well. So medical marijuana is gonna help in regardless. However, again, I, I can't emphasize enough how CBD is really the star of the show. So when you use a high THC product in my personal opinion is kind of acting like a pharmaceutical, your, your Oxycontin, your Percocet or anything for pain relief um, or inflammation or whatever you're dealing with. But as soon as the THC wears off, your, your symptoms come back. So that's why we want to try to preload up with CBD whenever you're not using THC. And you'll notice that your THC usage may not be as necessary or wanted. Um, you may find that, hey, I don't really need that much THC today. What's going on? And that's right. because now you're balancing out. Um, there's nothing wrong with just using high THC products as, you, as long as you use them as needed and you're not taking advantage of it. However, you're not really going to get the healing you're looking for unless you use the whole entourage effect or synergistic effect of CBD and THC and the terpenes. Um, yeah, I can't, I, I totally agree. You need to have that little bit of CBD in there um, to be able to help you. And in, in this case with inflammation, um, I would use a, I would lean toward the CBD side with a little bit of THC in it rather than the, than the opposite of that. Yep, um, and our yeah. one-to-ones are great. The one-to-one soup is what I would recommend for that. And we also have lotions. We have uh, high CBD lotions that have shown to help with eczema. Again, consult with your physician because depending on the severity of your, your, your flare-ups or anything that may come, we don't want to make or, or irritate that either. Um, it's all natural products. There shouldn't be anything, but each person is different. It's kind of like how you get one of those cleaners and it tells you to test it on a small inconspicuous spot on your carpet. Um, take a little dab on your finger, just rub it really lightly just to see what happens. Make sure it's, it's fine and you don't want to just slather it on at first time not knowing what the reaction is going to be. And I right. hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Next question is a good question. Um, if Florida limits THC to 10% with a new law, how does that affect the terpene levels? Um, first of all, I hope that doesn't come into play because there's no reason that polit politicians should stick to politics and keep their noses out of medicine. Uh, this is all political because the politicians in Tallahassee did not want medical cannabis and have done everything they can to try to neuter that law. The people are now going to vote and ask for um, recreational cannabis, whether it passes or not. I'll leave that up to the people. But I think trying to circumvent that and limit the amount of THC, I think is just wrong. Um, I think that's going against what the people want, but that's my opinion. Let me get off my political horse for a second. I think that if they're gonna limit the THC to 10%, I don't think, I think you'll still have terpenes in the product, uh, uh, Manny. I just think the levels will be a lot less. Your thoughts? It can be twofold. Um, I think so too. However, there's nothing regulating the terpene level. Right. My my concern would be in a recreational market, who's regulating where they're sourcing their terpenes? Right. Um, that's my concern. And the recreational market is, especially if these regulations are not set in place for labeling, um, sourcing, and so forth, 
could be quite dangerous, especially with like the, the Delta 8s and the 11 or the HHC, um, THC, so many different ones now. Um, so I don't think it's really going to affect the terpene levels unless the cultivar can, or the, the cultivator can figure out how to raise those levels naturally. And I'm right. sure they will, because that'll be the loophole in order to get a benefit or recreational or medicinal. Well, and it, and it, it makes the case for having a medical cannabis card because they're not going to be limited to 10%. Correct. I think it was just there. But um, I'll stay away from the politics. I do. I don't. We don't really know because I don't think we don't know what the we don't know what the law is going to be. Let's put it that way. Let's go to some of the live questions that were asked. I think uh, Claire asked a great question. What, pro what products are what products are terpenes most found? Flour, tincture, or oil? I don't think they're found in all of them. Your thoughts, Manny? They are found in all of them. However, it all comes from the flower. Um, the tincture may have the equitable amounts, if not maybe a little bit more, because it's a, a, it's produced in the lab. Uh, and the same with the oil. The oils are typically, especially if you're talking about our concentrate oils, um, they're just that concentrate oil. So they're going to have higher levels of terpenes. However, you're not taking a whole spoonful of it either. You're taking a drop about the size of a grain of rice. Um, so it's all equitable in the manner of how you're absorbing it, if that makes right. sense. Yeah. Julie asked a great question. I was told tinctures are the best way to get the best use of the terpenes. Tinctures do really uh, take advantage of terpenes, but I wouldn't rule out uh, flour and candle. I wouldn't rule out some of the topicals. Your thoughts, Manny? I'd agree. Um, any ingestible is going to be most beneficial for terpenes and CBD absorption, especially for buildup. Mm -hmm. However, you have to be cautious because what happens is most people either chew their chews too fast or they swallow their tincture too fast. The whole purpose of tinctures or sublinguals is for absorption in the mucosis of the mouth. And if you swallow it too fast, it hits the stomach acid, terpenes are destroyed, and now you have more of a concentrate in your stomach of THC and or CBD. And it's not as effective that you, as to the way that you were looking for. Mm -hmm. So any method is going to be fine as long as you follow the procedure. Tinctures hold in your mouth or under your tongue for at least 45 seconds if you can. I like to particularly mix it with a smoothie or yogurt so that way it's already absorbing with more fat and I get it straight down. Um, gummies or chews, I always tell people don't chew them, just suck on them. Um, my favorite yeah. are lozenges because lozenges are, you're forced to hold that hard candy in your mouth. Um, and then, or excuse me, the, the hard product in your mouth. And then if you start feeling it, you could go ahead and put it back in the wrapper, wrap it up, save it for later. Um, and you know exactly where your sweet spot's at. Right. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's a good point about the, I think I would lean towards tinctures. Um, babe, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the inhalation product and also the, um, the topicals. Um, sometimes the edibles, by the process of the way they're absorbed, don't take advantage of the terpenes, or actually remove the terpenes. Mm -hmm. um, question, Karen asked a great question. What what terpene is good for sciatica? I think in this particular case, what we're looking for is something that can both relax and um, and reduce the amount of inflammation. Your thoughts, Manny? A hundred percent. So I would I would suggest linalool, which is more relaxing and not sedative. If you need something a little stronger, with myrcene. Um, but again, you're going to want the total entourage effect. It's not one specific terpene because you're never going to isolate just one terpene in any given product. You're going to have a combination of that. So you want myrcene or linalool to be more dominant. Um, and then you want to make sure you have that entourage effect of CBD and THC. Again, I would recommend one-to-one -one patch. Yeah, and I would recommend, especially in this particular case, a tincture would help quite a bit. But don't, don't uh, I would also take a look at using a topical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the patch, lotion, salves are really good for that as well. They help quite a bit. Um, okay, this is a good question. I think this is right up your alley, uh, Manny. I did go into Cetera for a consult, but I didn't get the information I wanted. I wanted to get info like you were giving here. Uh, can I make an appointment or for a thorough consultation? I had also asked for a regiment that I uh, with you did, but they didn't know. They did not know. I think this is a case where maybe the consult didn't go too well. What should his next step be, Manny? Absolutely call the customer care center. Um, let them know, and they will reach out to the appropriate person to make sure they could reach back out to you and follow up with you. Um, and make sure that whatever did transpire is corrected. I am sorry that you did have that experience. 
Um, another thing you can do, I'm, I'm, I'm in a transition period within the company right now. And what I'm trying to be able to do is allow for any of the dispensaries to say, hey, Manny, can this person contact you? And you could talk to them over the phone. Um, so for right now, I don't do that yet. I'm still getting permission on that. But go, if you don't want to go back to the store, call customer care. I don't have the number right on hand with me. Um, and just let them know, say, hey, I would like for a manager or a supervisor to reach out to me regarding a console. Not Obviously, you're showing that you don't necessarily want to complain or make a big deal of it. However, you want that information. Um, so just let them know. And hopefully I could get that figured out by the end of this week and you and I could talk. Yeah. I think that um, if you had a bad experience, let customer service know. Okay, it's not it's not really complaining. I think they want to know what's going on out in the stores, and they'll help they'll help you handle it and get you to the right person, get you the right consultation. Because I think that's going to be really really important. So I think not just working with Manny, but I know you, within within uh, Satera, there's a number of very very good consultants, and you know there's some that are just new to the whole job. So you know we 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 hopefully can get you with one that has a little more um, experience in this particular area. Yeah, to, to, to give you a little bit of insight on that, I've, I've been doing this since 2018, um, a little before that in the military, but on the other side of the of the, the fence here. Um, so I have a lot to get back to my veterans, but it, it this doesn't occur overnight. It's been a lot of practice. Um, a lot of them are new and, and, and trying to figure out how this session works. And so Tara typically is the best when it comes to those consultations. We try to remain clinical and it's not just an indica sativa hybrid. We want to dive in there with you. So yeah, I, I would greatly appreciate a second chance, give our customer care a call. Um, and um, if anything, you can at least tell them, hey, can you relay a message to the manager? If you're really insistent that you wanna to talk to me and have a thorough consultation, say, hey, is there any way you can pass my information to, to Manny? They'll get in touch with me and then I'll talk to some of the area managers and see if I can make that phone call to you. Or if you're in the area, maybe we can have a consultation. I would be more than happy to. There you go, good. Uh, next question is, um... Um, did I did I hear on another webinar that food should be taken with cannabis? Uh, I take it every night at bedtime. Uh, doesn't food disturb how you sleep? That's a good question, Manny. You want to take that one? Yeah, sure. So yes and no. So when I talk to people who are suffering from sleep issues, I always tell them it's always beneficial to have something fatty with ingesting cannabis right before bed because it's going to help it get into your system better a spoon of peanut butter, um, a small little cup of yogurt, nothing too heavy, nothing too big. You're not going to have a huge meal. I also tell uh, a lot of my consultees that if you know you're going to have dinner and you're going to be going to bed maybe a couple of hours after dinner, have it just after dinner. It'll take longer to kick in because you have a full belly of food. Um, and by the time you're ready to go to sleep, it should be attaching and getting you there. Um, so, yeah. yes, I agree. You don't want to go to bed on a full stomach, but a little scoop of peanut butter, yogurt, Cool Whip, any little bit of fatty product that you can get in your belly to help it attach better. Manny, did you say chocolate? I mean, that also helps quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a chocoholic. I had to throw that in. You see cannabis and cookies, chocolates, all these fatty materials for that very reason. Yeah. Brownies. You didn't talk about, I, I make my own brownies. Um, yep. and there you go. Um, and I do decarboxylate the brownies that I make. So, um, how much, how much topical should I use for pain? I think this really depends on the person. You'll, you'll know how much works and doesn't work. Um, I tend to put uh, a, a couple of drops on my, on my hand and rub it in, and then I see how I feel. Your thoughts, Manny? Yeah, and it also depends on the product. Um, if it's a lotion, a, a yeah. fluid lotion, that's more going to be surface, muscle aches and strains. Um, our stabs and our bombs, particularly our one-to-one -one fixed bomb, is more mm -hmm. for our deep joint, deep muscle pain, works phenomenally. Um, and you can apply as needed because typically it's not going to have a tremendous amount of THC. Typically, we do have topicals like our uh, one-to-nine patch um, and dream and relief that are high THC. But it's such a minute amount that crosses into the bloodstream that you, you feel it, but it's not overwhelming. And a lot of it gets absorbed in the, the, I believe the epidermis and through the water table that filters for us into our body. Um, so you can use as needed. It's not necessary and it gets you too high unless it says it's a transdermal product like our patches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's there. It's a, it's, it's a good point. I, again, you every cannabis is very personalized. You'll know what's working and how much it's working. And the nice part about um, topicals is they work right away. You'll know within a minute or two if it's working. Um, Bonnie has a good question. 
do you have a recipe for uh, butter at the store and dispensary? Great question. Actually, if you go to our website, satura.com, we'll show you a few tricks of the trade and how you could do things um, with specific products. Um, I don't necessarily dabble in that much. I use um, not the magic butters, the uh, oil or something like that. Um, it's right. the same thing, just does it a little bit differently. Um, and I'm very rudimentary. My brownies and cookies aren't pretty, but they serve a purpose. So, um, But yes, um, you could go to our website, sutera.com, and find uh, ways to cook and do things with your canvas products. Yeah, I don't know if you have a butter recipe. I, I, I thought I saw one, but I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't want to commit you to something that's not there. I do know that Sherry Cannabis has a, a butter recipe. has a couple there of them actually, that work out really well. Next question is, Magic Butter Machine is $150 at Walmart. Thank you very much for looking that up. Um, Please repeat what you said you do with it. Um, in my particular case, I don't want, I don't want to get high. I, I work during the day. Uh, I work on eight different projects. And I getting high, I guess I could get high, but it's not going to do much to move the whole needle forward. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to get into uh, using cannabis to help with my inflammation because I have seven herniated discs in my neck. Um, and I want to adjust the pain because that's instant pain. So what I do is I take the magic butter machine. And I put in there um, uh, MCT oil. And then with that, I also put um, my cannabis. I use uh, seven grams of, of cannabis. And then I cook it at 160 degrees for uh, anywhere between uh, eight to 10 hours, depending on the, uh, on, on the actual um, MCT oil that I'm using. But I'll typically stay lean towards more towards the 10 hours than the eight hours. The idea is I'm warming up the, um, and by the way, I cook it at 160 degrees. So I'm warming up the cannabis uh, and, and the oil to 160 degrees, which causes the acids, the CBD, C THCA and CBC, CBDA to actually come out, but it doesn't turn it into CBD and THC. So I'm basically developing a formula that helps me quite a bit with my pain and my inflammation, but won't get me high. That's kind of an insider's trick to, to cannabis I learned from a couple of practitioners. I would love you folks to acknowledge that there are uh, doctors our physicians and doctors that treat patients as much as such as myself as a nurse practitioner and my um, physician assistant colleagues, perhaps using healthcare provider or primary care provider. Yeah, it would cover all of us that are working with patients providing cannabis as medicine. Um, I, I had to reread that too. Um, I would like to say absolutely. Um, I love it when somebody challenges me to say things like that. I will definitely try my hardest to start using healthcare provider or primary care provider. Because right. personally, I know as uh, an assistant, a practice manager, or, 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 or a clinic cannabis consultant, that we carry a lot of weight. Um, so I, my hats off to you. I do apologize, me personally, and I will start changing that. Thank you, Claire. Yeah, so that's a really good comment, Claire. And I don't think we're trying to put down or not acknowledge certain people. We clearly do. I know there's a lot of the. I mean, the the whole profession is really driven by more of the practitioners and the assistants. Thank you for the work that you do. And, and uh, I, I, like Manny, will definitely look at the labeling and make that a little bit better going forward in the future. Claire, thank you very much for that. Um, last question, which I love, is uh, what terpenes are good for elevating libido? There's a link here that you can take a look at. Uh, we, have, we did an intimacy uh, webinar last week. Um, so when you take a look at the terpenes, a lot of the terpenes that work great for that, it's kind of an interesting question because on one side as we talked in that webinar what's 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 going to help you get in the mood is the best way of putting it are you looking at relaxing to get in the mood or are you looking at getting energized to get in the mood and i think that is really the bottom line question so when you answer the terpene the question is which one is going to energize you like the lemonines or which ones are going to relax you like the lentils um, and i think that this really depends on which effect that you want to have happen you, if you want a relaxing effect i lean more toward the lentils if you want to elevate your, if you want to uh, get more energy, something like that, I'm leaning towards the lemonine side. And naturally, you also want to pay attention to um, mercine as well as beta rate of Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I actually watched that that webinar. I was very intrigued. Um, and every person is going to be a little bit different. One of the things that I like that you all said was, well, if it's just you, you can obviously figure out which ones, which way you want to go, whether it's more energetic, more relaxing, or somewhere in between. Um, it seems like from that webinar, Mark, I've had a lot of uh, follow-up questions while I was still at the dispensary saying, hey, do you have any Soothe 1-to-1 available? Because that falls right in that medium where sure. it kind of 
relaxes you. Like you had a couple of glasses of wine and makes you feel kind of nice. However, if you are working with your partner on this, this is the part I like from that, that, that session is that maybe one of you try some, see how it reacts. And then the other one try something. And then if you're both feeling it, then try it together and work your way into that. It's definitely going to be more pleasurable the more involved it is though. But again, it depends on what you and what you really do and what your partner want. I, I do want to, I do want to point out that it's, it's important that it, in that question, work with your partner. Okay, find out what works for both of you, not just uh, just yourself. That's really out there. And again, do you want energizing or do you want uh, relaxing? That's really there. Manny, we've been at this for a, a while. We've answered a lot of questions. Our goal is if just one person gets their life back, uh, we've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. We helped you quite a bit. I hope we hope that you've done that. Manny, do you have any final thoughts that you want to go over? I uh, just wanted to say thank you. It's always a pleasure. I love doing this. I love sharing that knowledge. Um, it just dawned on me that I'm actually going to be with you next week in the villages. Mm -hmm. um, so if that person who's anonymous, if you're in the area, come see us. I'd be happy to spend time with you there, too. We don't have to wait too long. Otherwise, I, again, I hope everybody had a great, um, pleasurable experience, learn something, um, and always come out and be curious. Sure. Yeah, that's a good point, Manny. We're, we're doing, Manny and I are doing an in-live person seminar at the, at the waterfront in, in the villages next Tuesday. That's on the 27th. It starts at 9.30. It'll go till about 11, 11.30. And we'll be covering um, how to get started, how to get how to get started, how to get started with medical cannabis and how to use it. We'll be talking about that and answering your questions. And please, if, for the one person who had those questions, come see us. It's it's in the villages. Um, hopefully it's, it's close to you. But it's something that we are passionate about. Uh, Manny, I want to thank you very much for the help tonight. I think it's important that we answered a lot of questions. And for the folks watching, we hope you got your questions answered. It's their shout out. But thank you all for joining us. And we hope you can join us at the Villages or live the week after when we come back to doing cancel.